This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. Very warm welcome back to our final match of the night here in the Champions League pool here on Free Sports. Our final match of the night and three can still qualify for the quarterfinals. They will only allow one though. It's one from three. Two players are currently playing. Chris Day anxiously waiting in the wings. We've got every chance of a shootout. We've got every chance as well of Sean Storry qualifying. This is how the situation First currently time, Price, looks. Sean Storry with a win qualifies through to the quarterfinals. Tom Price with a win sets up a shootout with Chris Day who currently tops the table. If this match is a draw it will be a shootout between Sean Storry and Chris Day. Oh am I excited Simon. There's a very good chance we're going to see our first six red shootout. The only person that can stop it happening, he's at the table now, Sean Story, and he's got a very good opening opportunity. And I think we'll find out the answer to this question, because I know I'm about to speak to Chris Day very shortly, and I'll ask him exactly this. But I don't think, obviously Chris's answer is changed by the fact that he, the only way he can qualify is via a shootout. But no player wants it. It's it's a horrible, horrible thing to face up against. It would be a lot of fun if you didn't have a ten thousand pounds to the winner tournament on the night. Um, it's it's going to be it's very it's it's one way to to decide a tournament. It's going to be a lot of drama, a lot of fun for us to watch. I don't think it's going to be that much fun for the players, um, but we're going to love that. We should really mention that it's it's, it's a six red challenge. The player that can pot the six reds the quickest will walk away with victory and move on to the second stage of this competition. And you may see players sprinting around the table. As long as the white ball stops, you can play a shot. It is as rapid as you possibly can. It's almost like pinball when you get them going. Well, Sean Story has already queued one in beautifully into this bottom left pocket. He needs another one. Goes for the one down the rail, which he is. This needs playing with precision. Yeah, how about it? Although, has he got into it too much? I think that reaction tells you he has snookered himself on his final ball. Of all the shots to get into too much. He cued that so well, didn't he? He really did. Oh, I, oh, I thought for a second that was going to drop in, but... That is so unlucky. I was just about to say, of all the shots to, to overplay, a shot like that along the rail, you can't believe it's that one. He just hit it so much cleaner than he ever expected to. He hit it so well. Cuba really flew out there and he'll feel a little bit unfortunate to snooker himself, but now he has to sit there and watch Tom Price try and mop these up. He had a couple of opportunities like this in his match against Chris Day and he didn't manage to to take them out he ran out into some problems and like his first match where he made a couple of great finishes he just got himself in his own way and he's very keen not to do that here needs to make sure he leaves the right angle on the yellow in the middle of the table so that he can track down past the eight ball onto his final ball. That looks to be perfect. Stayed there for a second. He just thought he might be going into the eight ball, but it did just slid by.
no mistakes with the eight ball. So Tom Price does get this first frame on the board. It, Sean Storey had the first opportunity, but snookered himself on his last red. So it is Tom Price that's one nil ahead. And you heard Stephen Chambers said he was going to get a few words with Chris Day. Well, we can go over to him now. We certainly can. Chris, how are we feeling? That was, uh, I imagine that was a bit of a nerve shredder, that last match against Eddie. Yeah, it was. Uh, I started off a little bit nervous. Um, and then I was obviously two run down, having missed a couple of opportunities that you should take. Um, and then obviously Eddie left me that sort of horrendous table. And I thought, you've got to get these, because if you don't, he's going to play out the time. And that's the match gone, and hopefully you'll get a chance in the last frame. But I, I never did, unfortunately. We were talking a little bit about it on commentary. You see, we start the match off like a train, following on from how you finished against Tom with a couple of really, really good clearances. Yeah. Was it a match that just sort of seemed to just drag away a little bit with with the time? Because it, all of a sudden you needed one really, really big double to to keep yourself in the tournament. Yes, uh, it did. But um, it's it's difficult as a pool player to to think I, sh I shouldn't be in this position. Um, but it's you can one of two ways. You can either shy away from it and hide, or you can be aggressive and and try and clear up. And that's what I tried to do. So hopefully, well, luckily, I got them. And I said I'd ask you six red sheets out. How, you, yeah, how do you feel about it? Well, I feel it's really the only good. way you can I feel really good at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, I feel really good about it. But listen, um, Sean's a really good friend of mine. So if he wins and he gets through, I'm going to be really happy for him. Any other result, and I'm going to be running around the table like Speedy Gonzalez. And approaching it, yep. how, how do you put yourself in a frame of mind to take that on? Have you given yourself any practice? I've for practiced that? it at home, yeah. Um, I'm going to back myself into a corner here, but I've been averaging between 25 and 30 seconds when they're going well. Um, so cue a minute and a half when I actually do it, if I do. Um, but, you know, I've practiced it, so you, you can only be as prepared as you can be, can't you? Sounds like a plan, mate. Well, best of luck if it gets that far. Thank you. Thank you. to get the thoughts of Chris Day who is eagerly awaiting the result of this match as his tournament balance and tournament existence is on the line Stephen Jameson rejoins me interesting that he said 25 to 30 seconds we know through experimenting with this 25 to 30 seconds is a great time yeah we can call it trial and lots of error <laughs> yeah. what we've put ourselves through as Sean's about to mop up here to level the scores I feel like we might have a little bit of this in this match 1-1 one, one. but yeah just just on the on the shootout that we we could have if we have two of three results heading into this heading into the end of this final match we reckon 30 seconds is a, is a par score. Anything over that, and you're really looking over your shoulder. Anything under it, and you've got a sniff. It's interesting to hear, actually, Chris Day, a man who is far, far better than certainly me, and I think you'd say, you'd say the same, Simon. Comfortably, yeah. Is, uh, is, is 25 to 30 is, is what he's, he's sort of averaging. It's what, what we thought it might be, and that is quick. Yeah, I would be concerned if I had 30 Third frame. but I thought I'd have a Top good chance if I had 25 I would be f sitting there Finally. fairly confidently uh, time will tell whether we get to see that or not I have to say that was a great response from Sean Storey having made the mistake he made in the opening frame to respond with a massive break in fact he almost made a golden break uh, but even after that he took them out beautifully and the breaking dish to level things up was excellent it's not a great contact from Tom Price in response. And to table over to Sean. And despite not getting a, a great contact, it's actually on first look red not a black. bad lie, although that red's gone a little bit unkind for my money. First shot just left it awkward. Not really a finish on. He still tried to take that onto the top right hand corner, but no finish to really go at. And same story for Tom Price. 
Those yellows at the bottom are really awkward, and the reds at the top are so far away from them. If he has to go into them, he's going in from distance, which is not ideal. But we've seen all, all night long he's a very aggressive player. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be in doubt that he's taking these on. Although, looking at that camera angle, I think the middle of those three yellows goes to the corner pocket, and that changes things. It does, need, does mean he has to play a very good positional shot, but if he gets that positional shot right, they can all open themselves up. Well, he can't play that positional shot from here, or not, certainly not easily. Needed to be a foot short of where he's finished. Yeah, got into that a hell of a lot. I think he thought about playing that middle yellow there on the cut. He might still think about it. There you go. Well, this would be a clutch shot. Tell you what. Made the pot, but the white's no wet. I don't think, anyway, I don't think you can see this yellow at the top of the table just on first glance. Needed a thicker contact on the red. He just got it, caught a ball. Well, he looked for another elaborate escape plan. We've seen him play a couple of magnificent shots tonight, Tom Price. But in the end, he, he sort of... He, he took the odds on, really, didn't he? And... There's a reason why that phrase exists. Didn't quite manage to, to win out. So Sean Storry, cue ball in hand. Yeah, cue ball in hand anywhere on the table, which is one of the international eight ball rules. Maybe slightly unfamiliar to here on free sports. Don't get any shot on a visit or two shots or anything like that. It is cue ball in hand and then it's just a normal visit, cue ball anywhere on the table. Wasn't the greatest use of that cue ball on the table. He didn't quite get the angle he wanted to. You could tell he was a bit time pressured into wanted to go back and, and tweak it to get it right. Still has an opportunity here though. Oh, and that's beautiful. That is a lovely shot. Now has a great opportunity. I do think it's good when you've got to play that contact on the, the eight ball and if you catch it full ball you're on nothing can you get it half ball and it all pings out out to open perfect it, it's such an excellent shot to do that here really was right. Sean Storry goes 2-1 in front remember Sean Storry win this is the night for us because that will see him straight through into the quarterfinals. We've still got so many good players still to come. Group six next week sees Craig Lakin, Tony Blount, Carl Sutton, Dave McNamara. We've got Chris Melling up in group seven at the start of February. Mick Hill still to come as well. Two of the greats. Yeah, you'd say the two biggest names in the bottom half of the draw for sure. Two of the biggest names in the tournament as a whole, Chris Melling and, and Mick Hill. We have seen Chris Melling in a shootout Four event frames. before, but this will be Four Mick Hill's first. Two, two very big names Hi, from the world of Paul. Really looking forward to seeing how they get on, but well, that's for a few weeks' time. Eight ball in motion again. It's not a good split. It's not a good contact, rather. It might well be a decent split. The way these have shaped up down the middle of the table it almost looks like a, a training exercise in a way Simon the, the way it's the way it's set up this isn't Extension I don't ball. think a bad lie if Tom Price can keep, can pick the pattern which is the key here yeah, I think every yellow and every red actually has a pocket even though they're, they're lined up red as you say in play. some sort of training routine just short of pace, sorry. Yeah, I, th I was just about to say, I think he's six inches short of where he wanted to be. Right into the middle was his next shot. Here's the plan song, there's your answer. A good shot that is. Always takes the aggressive option. There's Tom Price, at least on the evidence of tonight. Well, being on this one in the centre pocket as well, this is the last of the... I thought that might be a tricky ball, but the fact he was on it. Excellent. This did look awkward two seconds ago now it's it's not looking so awkward yeah it just goes to show world championship semi-finalist in 2012 I think it was 
top price. You know, World Rule sometimes gets a bit of a bit of a tough rep for being quite a defensive form of the game. I can't imagine <laughs> Tom Price gave that much of a much shrift. Yeah, I agree. He does. This is an attacking rule set, and this suits him. Yeah, he does play very attacking, Paul. He really does. The yellow going in, no problem at all. He just His worry here is he's a little thin on this red. He might try and pot it off the thick part of the pocket. He doesn't want to go too far like he has. Now he can't get nicely on the eight ball. would love that white to have stopped a few inches short of where it has. Yeah, he's got to come in and out. He might hit a blocker. And his fears are confirmed. Bit of a hit and Chris. Nothing comes up. Well, 7 minutes 43 on the clock. All this match, the whole night, is now in Sean Storey's hands. It's quite close looking at it on that replay, yeah. wasn't it? Is it far away? Sean knows he should take these out. He knows he should put himself 3-1 in front and on the verge of making it through a very tough group. There's nothing a problem in this counter-clearance. Everything goes. Even that one nearest the centre pocket you can see from that camera angle drops in comfortably enough. Just has to decide which ball does he want to leave to get onto the eight ball nicely. He looks indecisive now. Yeah, certainly caught in two minds, wasn't he? Yep. It's not perfect. He's got enough angle that he can get back into good position, though. Yeah, chopping down a little bit of left-hand side to straighten it out. And now, it's all on your pace. He wants to be as close to the eight ball as he can. Under hits it and it becomes a much tougher pot. That looks almost dead eye straight. On the queuing this. This is for one away. Never in doubt. If you're short story, he backed himself right from the start of that counter clearance. Just made sure. I think it was a fairly routine clearance in any other circumstance, but the, just the pressure of that one just seemed to be ratcheted up a notch. I think even Sean himself felt it with a couple of a couple of those shots. He got He's himself, one away. He is one away. He got it was three three balls out, and he just looked like he couldn't quite make his mind up which way he wanted to go, which ball he wanted to leave. And, uh, but he still managed to get perfectly on that eight ball and made no mistake with it. And a 3 1 in front with not, well, we're still about a quarter of this match still to go just over. It's still very much in his hands. The, the six red shootout is looking less likely now. It certainly mm. is. Sean needs to win five. one frame to, break. to qualify Five's for the quarter finals. Tom Price needs to win the next three for himself to qualify. If he wins the next two, it could force a shootout between Sean and Chris Day. It's a hammer of a break from Tom Price. Saw the tap of the knee from Sean's story. Sean will be pleased to see that though. Look yeah. at that cluster on the left-hand side. Five, he's saying run the clock down. If Tom is going to have to go for this, he's going to go for it anyway because that's how he plays. But with every ball that's potted here, Sean is getting happier and happier. Has he got a bit of an angle on this yellow to the top right, maybe, to force something? It's difficult. It really is. Oh, where's the eight ball? Oh, it stays on the table. He's unlucky there, Tom. He had to go for it, you feel, with the state of the match. It was a really, really tough clearance, that. And if he jams that yellow in the corner pocket, all of a sudden it looks a lot more on. Sean Storry now. Is six reds and an eight ball away from a shot, from a place rather, in the quarter-final. He misses his first shot. Now then, 
Tom Price. This might just ratchet up that pressure once again on Sean Story. We missed the cannon he was after. He was trying to flick the red away from the yellow. Slid by it in no man's land now. I think even Tom Price has to play something of a safety, right? Yeah, I think the reason Tom's is old, I mean, Tom's always aggressive. Well, this might not be far away, but you've got to remember that a draw is no good for Tom. So he needs to win three frames. So he's almost going extra fast, even for himself, because he knows time is very much against him. Sean's not going to worry too much about the clearance here, I don't think, with that red and yellow, the way they've come back together. Doesn't want that to drop. Judge yeah. that well. One man who is probably practicing away on a distant corner of this club that we're in is Chris Day. Oh, I tell you what, all of a sudden, possibly in with a shout, although the red going over the top corner pocket has made it difficult. It so nearly came out perfectly, nearly got that nudge he needed. Some go for vision. It again. Oh, we tried to play oh. it as a thin cut into the middle. And that foul might just do it. Might have even been as played that. Oh, I'm sure he played that plant, yeah, definitely. Just to see that plant was pretty special. It had the air of a, of a sort of hit and hope, but on second glance, that was absolutely as played, yeah. Well, Sean Storry now has his chance. He won't get a better one. This is it for a spot in the quarterfinals. To join Josh Kane, Aaron Davies, Phil Harrison and Neil Raybone. To emerge from a snake pit of a group, Sean Storey is a quarter finalist in the Vinnie.co.uk Champions League. He held his nerve when it counted the most. Brilliant stuff from Sean Storey, he really was. He got stronger and stronger as the night went on and controlled that match. Once he got himself in front, he was putting a lot of pressure on Tom Price and really seeking to control the match. Excellent stuff from Sean, very deserved winner. He certainly was, and that will just about do it for the action here in the Champions League pool. But do stay with us. Sean Story joins us after the break. Our quarter final lineup is starting to look pretty juicy indeed. This programme is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. Welcome back to the Vinnie Yacht Code UK Champions League pool here on Free Sports. What a night we have had. Heading into our final match of the evening, three players could still qualify. In the end, without the need of a shootout, that man is Sean Storey. He's had to work very, very hard to get into this position. And we're about to ask the man himself, how does he feel? Sean, you've had to work so, so hard. How does it feel to cross that line? I'm just going to apologise to everyone here that uh, you didn't get a shootout tonight. You know, it was very close, but, um, but yeah, no, it was um, always going to be a tough group and really, really pleased to get through. I thought I played well when I needed to, a few mistakes, but overall really happy. Because we can ask you, actually, we, we asked Chris in, in our last interview, because you had the option of deciding your own fate. Was a shootout something you really actively wanted to avoid or were you OK with that as being a possible eventuality? Well, we were, we were asking Lee and... Um, well, you guys are the rules, basically, because apparently if the reds are still moving, you, as long as the whites stop, that's allowed. So I had a little, one little quick practice before Chris's game, <laughs> just because I've never even tried it. But, um, yeah, so, I, you know, at the end of the day, you can't look too far ahead. You've just got to play the game, and if it goes to a shootout, it goes to a shootout. But I was just pleased to be in that position, really. The results kind of went my way after being 2-1 down the first game to Chris. So. And speaking of your performance tonight, played some really, really top stuff at times. Were you, how pleased were you with it? Yeah, the, bit, the bits that were good were really good. And then there was a few real, real silly errors, but, you know, a bit rusty and I can take that. So, you know, as I say, I think I came good when I needed to. You're into a quarterfinal lineup, which is looking like sort of an all-star team, really. How excited are you to be a part of that, whatever the draw ends up being? Yeah, that's why we enter, isn't it? To, to keep going, try and win these tournaments. So, you know, I think I can win it. So 
just cut out the silly errors and my brake was working if my brake's like that through the rest of the game. I think I need one dry brake all night, quite a few dished, so that, that's what kept me in it really. Well, we can't wait to watch you in the quarterfinals. Congratulations on making it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, a really, really top performance from Sean Story, a deserved winner of group number five of the Champions League. And Simon, this is what we've still got to look forward to. Yeah, we're five weeks through, but we've got some big, big names coming up. This is the, the four winners we saw in the first four weeks. Josh Kane, Aaron Davis, Phil Harrison and Neil Raybone. And then Sean Story joins them tonight. And then group six, seven and eight. That is what we have coming up. Some very big names next week. Craig Lakin, Tony Blount, Carl Sutton and Dave McNamara. And then group seven and eight, headlined by Chris Melling and Mick Hill. It really is an all-star lineup still to come. It's an all-star lineup already in those quarterfinals. Five men through now, Simon. And you just look at any one of those five names and you think they're a potential winner of this tournament. It really is a testament to the quality of the players that are on show here. Yeah, absolutely. And also we've got to see the players as some of them are used to playing shootout pool. Some of them aren't, but they've grown, especially you look at someone like Phil Harrison, one of the biggest names in the pool world. You saw how he grew through his night. Um, he's going to come back in the next stage. He's going to be stronger. I think everyone that's come through is going to be stronger for not just the fact they've come through, but the way they've come through as well. So it's really shaping up to be a fascinating um, second stage. And now we have five through. Who's impressed you the most at this stage of the tournament, would you say? I think they all have in, in different ways. I think week one we saw Josh play um, some Josh Kane play some great pool, but um, Aaron Davis was just his normal, you know, relentless, consistent self. He he never seems to play badly. As I said, Phil Harrison, who started slowly in his first shootout a few, few weeks ago, a few months ago now, he wasn't as impressive as he normally is. Didn't start that well, but he finished so strongly. And then uh, what do we saw? It saw Neil Raybone, who was a, a late addition to the, the competition. He looked very, very uh, sharp as well. And of course, Sean Story tonight, who's, who's come out, as I mentioned, of a, of a snake pit of a group. I know you've got a few splinters in your backside from, from that answer, Simon, but I, I respect it's a very, very tough call to make. They have all done what they can to deserve a place in those quarterfinals. We only have three more left to fill, and the next three weeks on Free Sports are set to be very, very interesting. From myself and Simon and, and all the team here in Newcastle Underline, thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next Monday night. This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk.